welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Um, as as I promised, I did two. I'm doing two episodes on my Winery of the Year for 2017 Curlew Vineyards. Ryan Crane, winemaker, Stephen uh, Lefesco, assistant winemaker, started in 2007. I don't think I mentioned that in the white episode. You can see, of course, same shirt. I'm filming these back to back. Hopefully put out one on Tuesday and one on Friday next week. And it's that week, next week, that I'm going down to see and visit Ryan Crane down in Soda, where they have a tasting room down there. And I believe that's where they also make their wine. So he's been in the business for 10 years now, making Curly's uh, Cellars wines. He started making them at Vapiano, where he was the assistant winemaker for three years. And um, I really like his wines. Like I said, I tasted them. I... Whoa, what was that? That was weird. Anyway, um, I have my uh, Bluetooth speaker on <laughs> down. Okay. That kind of threw me off. Anyway, I've tasted his red wines. I just finished an episode tasting his white wines. I was very impressed with them. Uh, the Chardonnay actually caught me a little bit off guard, as you noticed. And that was mainly because I wasn't expecting it to be so much like a Chablis. But I was very impressed with it. I think it'll age. Uh, it'll show some age, and I'm hoping it does. Uh, I really liked it. But, you know, it's 48 bucks. You know, it's kind of spending for a Chardonnay. And I know a lot of you that drink buttery Chardonnays won't like it. Those of you who like Chablis will love it. So now we're going to do the reds. I have four reds here, so I'm going to get right into it. I want to taste them and uh, give you my thoughts on them. Curlew Cellars 2014 Upland Vineyard Grenache Snipes Mountain, which is basically the Yakima Valley. Uh, excited to try this. I mean, I, of course, I got the big ass glass out here. I got the big bad boy. I like this glass. My son really likes this glass a lot. You can almost you can almost pour a whole bottle of wine into it. I got some of my buddies coming over because I told them I was going to shoot this video and I did not want these wines to go to waste, of course. So they're going to come over and help me polish off the bottles tonight. I'm excited about that. Susie's in London right now. She's over there visiting her friends and her family. Um, happy for her to do that. I uh, just got done talking to her uh, recently, of course, over there. It's... She's about ready to go to bed. Uh, let's see what we get on the nose. Grenache. Oh. <laughs> Great nose. Oh, there's so much. There's, I get a, like a, almost like a tarragon. Basil. Not basil. Tarragon. Thyme. Nice herbal qualities. Getting a lot of licorice on this one. God, I can't get past those dried herbs. That's very cool. I love it. That's sort of a nerdy part of us in, in the wine world. Getting almost like a, a blackberry, kind of strawberry, blackberry component coming through. Love the nose on this one. I get a little bit of a, a nose burn. But uh, 13.7, so it's, you know, nice alcohol levels there. Yeah, getting, definitely getting a blackberry, strawberry, tarragon, thyme thing going on. Yeah, I like it. Licorice. Love it. Let's see what we get on the palate. Beautiful balance on this wine. Beautiful. Spicy. I love that spiciness on the back end. Solid fruit, but it stays in check. There's a little bit of minerality I'm getting on the back end with those that spice component. A little bit of wet stone, which is kind of cool. But up front, I get a little bit of tiny, tiny, tiny hit of vanilla. A little bit of uh, plum. Strawberries for sure. A lot of strawberries coming through on the back side.
but here's the cool part. Those, those herbs, those uh, herbs come through right up in the mid palate. You're getting that kind of interest. This is a complex wine, smooth as a baby's bottom. Very smooth, but then it gets that kind of spicy component on the back end. Finishes fresh. There is nothing fruit forward about this wine. In fact, I know a couple of guys that are come over tonight are going to love it because it's a classic example that you don't have to go fruit bomb to get a really quality wine with good complexity. I mean, I love the dried herbs. I love the, the strawberry, the plum, the blackberry coming through. Licorice is there for sure. Uh, nice minerality on the backside with a little bit of, uh, of uh, wet stone coming through. Very, very cool wine. What did I do? get the price? Fifty-seven. I'm gonna double check. I gotta write this down because you can't see on the back. It's kind of dark. Um, I think I did a close-up. I am so excited to try these wines. I'm totally messing up here. Here you go. Very cool, kind of an etched glass style wine. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. I got so excited to dive into these wines. There's a nice wet flower, a uh, red flower component coming through as well. Um, it just speaks to the fact that, as I've said many times, Washington State can make a variety of wines very well, uh, you know, varietals very well. This is a beautiful Grenache. I'm, I'm serious. Yes, it's $57, but let me tell you, if you want to get a good quality Grenache from, from Washington State, this is worth all of the 57 bucks. Seriously, it's worth it. You will not quaff this wine down. You will think about it. You will take your time with it. A glass of this wine probably lasts three times as long as another wine. Just because of the complexity, the structure, the balance, everything about it. It's a beauty. Again, even right now, right now, I'm still tasting it, and I'm getting a little tobacco component right on the back of my gums. I'm loving that wine. Yeah, I'm going to go straight up A. I mean, probably one of the best Grenache I've tasted. I'm not sure if, I can't even remember if that was one of the ones I tried before, but I'm telling you, it's a beauty. What was the vintage on that? 2014? 14, not the best vintage I've had in Washington State. It's a good vintage. A lot of vintages in Washington State are good. My favorite was 13. I'm liking the 15s. So that's a 14, and to pull that sort of a wine out of a 14 vintage, I'm impressed. This is the 2015, as I, as I mentioned earlier. This is called the Curlew Cellars Majestic Columbia Valley. It is a blend of, and I like the way he does this, this is really cool. 44% uh, Art Den Hode Vineyard Grenache. 25% Upland Vineyard Grenache, 5% Upland Vineyard Syrah, and 4, what? Twenty-six percent. Is that right? Stone Tree Vineyard Morvedra, twenty-six, seventy. Yeah, that's right. I looked wrong. I looked wrong. I had to do the math. Oh, that's kind of weird. I've actually, there has actually been a few wineries that I've looked on the back of their label and their percentages are over 100. Some of them, have, well, one of them in particular did it on purpose. I'm not sure how they could do that. But, um. So this is a blend, a Rhone style blend, as I mentioned. In the white video, uh, he likes doing Rhone-style wines. He, well, it's obvious why. He's very good at it, I think. It's my winery of the year. Wow. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh, I get a little cinnamon hit. I love, <laughs> I love getting cinnamon on the nose. And this one has a big time. Cinnamon, licorice, uh, blackberries. 
Get a little bit of tobacco underneath. Let's see what we get on the palate. I just can't, I can't get over these wines. Um, they're, I get mocha, I get chocolate, I get blackberries, I get currants, I've got, it's got such good balance. It's fresh, but still shows fruit. Excellent balance on these wines. Licorice kind of lingers on the backside with just a little splash of tobacco. Twenty-six bucks. Once again, sorry about that, guys. I probably didn't even do a close-up. Actually, the labels are all very close, but I want to show it to you anyway. Twenty-six dollars for this majestic. It's a blend, as I said. A lot of Mavedra in that. Mavedra is one of my favorite varietals, and uh, you know it's mostly Muved and Grenache with just a little splash of Syrah. And I'm telling you, once again, excellent balance, excellent foot. A fruit, good structure, a little bit of leather going on. The tannins are are uh, definitely firm, but very, very approachable. Very dry on the finish, actually kind of sucking the moisture out of my cheeks out of my gums right towards the finish. What I like, and that tobacco kind of really hit solid on the backside with that kind of blackberry thing going on. Almost like a marionberry component. But it's all held together in this nice structure package that doesn't get it over the top fruit. Cool thing about this wine, what I think, this is just my opinion of course, is you can drink this baby solo but man, I'm telling you, have a stew. Have a lamb stew with this baby. Have lamb, have a roast, have a steak, have something like that. This baby begs for food, but at the same time, at the same time, it drinks nicely all by itself. Now that's a hard uh, balance to strike, and he's done it. Ryan Crane has done it. And that minerality, I feel like I just licked a bunch of wet rocks. I love minerality in my wine. I love minerality in my wine. <laughs> and just a nice, uh, you know, nice, uh, soft, kind of very uh, delicious finish with that minerality, with that structure. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. I'm going to go A, straight up A on that one as well. Um, there's no flaws in it. I mean, it just has all the balance. And those both will lay down easily five years. Easily. Easily five years. Let's move on. I'm not sure if I should put the Syrah first or the cab, but I'm going to go for Syrah first. 2014 Curlew Cellars Syrah, Walla Walla Valley. This rolls in at $40. It is... Uh, 88% Le Colines Vineyard in uh, Walla Walla, Block 43 and 46, I like that, and 12% Upland Vineyard, uh, only 184 cases made, unfine, unfiltered. Let's give it a little rinse. I can't hardly wait to meet him. I really, I, I, I love his winemaking style. Uh, I love what he's doing. Definitely caught my attention. Let's see what we get on the nose. It smells like classic Washington State Syrah. Get, I get boysenberries. It's a 
tobacco. There's a, a little bit of a meat component coming through, like roasted meat. Get a little bit of a black raspberry slash licorice thing coming through. Very perfumed. And I always, I, I use the word perfume sometimes because there's different types of aromatics and some aromatics just kind of leap out at you. And those are what I call perfume because they're more amplified on the nose. And that really, you know, like perfume, you know, you can... You can have a smell and then you can put that in a perfume form and it just becomes greater and more amplified. That's what I'm getting. When I say perfume, that's what I mean. This is very perfumed on the nose. There's definitely like a, a sweet fruit component coming through big time. Let's see what we get on the palate. Crazy good, crazy good. If you want to know what Washington State Syrah can do, now a lot of Washington State Syrah will get this huge kind of bacon fat component. This is more, this has a touch of that, but it's very meaty. It reminds me a lot of like the, uh, a coat roti, but ready to drink now. Like you just bought a coat roti 10 years ago and you popped it open and here you go. It has that kind of roasted meat component. It has marionberry. Just a little bit of blueberry, just a touch of blueberry coming through. Usually coat roti shows a little bit more blueberry, but that doesn't matter. This has a very coat roti-ish texture to it. And good minerality on the backside. I love that about Ryan. His wines definitely show terroir. And I love it. He doesn't mask that. He strides for it. I get the blueberry right on the back of the mid palate, mixed with that kind of marionberry, meaty, good, solid, tannic structure, but very approachable. I get a lot of leather and crushed rock on the finish, but it's very balanced. It doesn't, like, it's not outputting at all. You just kind of accept it. Hey, there it is. Hey, I like it. What is that? A lot of you are, what am I getting there? You're getting minerality. And very fresh, almost crunchy on the finish. It's so fresh. Wow. Wow. Tobacco right on the front of the mid palate, all the way into the finish. You get a solid tobacco component right on the back end. Nice and crunchy on the finish. Once again, I could drink this wine solo. But you throw this in with any sort of a meat dish, you are going to be blown away. Blown away. Come Christmas time, in fact, if I were you, seek a bottle of this out. What did we say it was? 40 bucks, which is, if this were from, okay, let me, let me put this in perspective for you. If this was a coat roti, it could be $300. $80 easily. Here you have a coat roti with a little New World Glove for 40 bucks. Come on. Yeah, buy one, find one, buy it, put it away and open it up when you have your prime rib dinner at Christmas time or if you decide to do prime rib at Thanksgiving, whatever, open it up, you are going to love it. It is that good. That's an A plus Syrah. I don't go A plus very often, but that is an A plus Syrah. Great structure, great balance, ageability, up the yin yang. I'm talking 20 years. You could put this away for 20 years easily. 2015 Curlew Cellars, Clipson Vineyard, Cabernet Sauvignon, Red Mountain. Clipson is probably one of the most famous. One of the most famous Red Mountain uh, vineyards, 100% Clipson fruit, 156 cases made, unfine, unfiltered, 
this goes in at $50. At $50. tell I'm excited because I just not even keep it with my normal pattern. Oh. Never tasted this cab. This is the first time. Let's see what we get on the nose. Immediately, I mean immediately currents. Right currents, no less. Almost like a candied element coming through, like candied currants. There's underlying uh, tobacco components coming through, a little bit of chocolate as well. Let's see what we get on the top. I'm curious because he's a very much a, uh, you know, we call him Roan Rangers. He loves doing Roan style lines. I'm so I'm really excited to try his cap. There's a, a very, very interesting flavor profile coming here. Currents, of course, right up front. But have you ever had a, uh, remember those cinnamon graham crackers? Cinnamon flavored? And then put a little bit of chocolate on them? That's exactly what I'm getting. Right in the mid palate, into the finish, with minerality, with a little bit of white pepper coming through. This is a delicious, delicious, cab. This is a delicious cab that has good structure. It, it doesn't go heavy on the palate. Good fruit. That cinnamon graham. I love cinnamon graham crackers. In fact, it's been a long time since I've had them. But boy, is that coming through big time with like you, you know, have you ever done chocolate and graham crackers in a sandwich? Imagine doing a, a chocolate sandwiched graham cracker with the cinnamon variety. And yet at the same time, you have occurrence, you have tobacco, you have all those things coming through. Good acidity keeps it fresh. There's, like I said, once again, Ryan doesn't like to go fruit bomb. This is delicious without being over the top. Good structure. Good acidity, good flow across the palate, and it finishes with that little bit of minerality that I know he loves so much, I can tell. In fact, I can hardly wait to interview him and talk to him about minerality and showing terroir and, and just expressing the wine the way it should be. Um, a lot of guys would spend 75, 80 bucks on a Napa cab. That is a big fruit bomb. And think they got their money's worth. This is 50 bucks. This is a delicious cab, but at the same time, it has all those elements that give it ageability, give it complexity, give it the interesting factor. That's really what I think Curlew Cellars has is interesting. Their wines are interesting. Chardonnay blew me away. I wasn't expecting it. I had to kind of think about, oh yeah, that's Chablis style. I uh, love the rosé. Grenache Blanc had to be the most interesting Grenache Blanc I've ever had in my life. This guy knows how to make wines. I'm going to go. I'm going to go straight up A on the cab as well. I think it has a lot. It's an excellent cab. All of these are QPRs. I know you're thinking, ah, oh, Stan, but they're in the forty to fifty dollar range. Yes, they are. They are there. But come on. Anywhere else, these wines would be easily twenty to thirty dollars more a bottle. So there you have it. Ah, so excited. I kind of screwed up a little bit. Sorry, guys, but thanks for watching.
and spending a little time out of your day. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.